Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem. So today we're going to discuss and try to learn the uh, a deeper meaning and understanding to the mitzvah of the sukkah based on what we have learned until now in the build-up of the Yamim Noraim, right? From Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, we spoke about Yom Kippur and how now the Malchut is inside the Keter, right? The Malchut and is now with the Bina and in the Keter, and we're in the quarters of the Melech, and we're bringing down after rebuilding the vessels of all the sefirot, we're bringing down all the shefa, all the abundance and the beracha that we were zoche to get for this year on Yom Kippur down, right? And that we do through the mitzvah of the sukkah during the seven days of sukkot and through the mitzvah of the lulav. So right now we're going to focus on the sukkah and we're going to see how there is a correlation between the, the, the avodah that we have spoken until now. So there is a, the first Mishnah, okay? It's based on the, the first Mishnah in, in Masechet Sukkah. The Sukkah says the following, Sukkah she'i gvo'a lemala me'esrim ama, a Sukkah that is higher than 20 amot, psula. It's not kasher. Okay, it's too high, too high. So you don't feel you're in the Sukkah, some of said you have, when you lift your eyes, you, you really have to lift your head to see to see uh, the scha. That's uh, that's the Tanakama. Rabbi Uda says it's kosher. Machloket Tanakama and Rabbi Uda. And then the She'enagvo Asarat Fachim. Also, if it's lower than ten Fachim, Psula. It's too slow. Too low. Too low. And you need three defanot, three walls. Okay. Uh, so. Very good. We're going to stop here in the Mishnah. So. Chazal teach us that the sukkah represents the, uh, the constellation of the sefirot. How? Because the schach, the schach that covers the defanot needs to be made of something that cannot be impure, right? It cannot be mekabel tuma. So it cannot be made, made of a metal, it cannot be made of a utensil, if it's, even if it's wood. It has to be something that cannot be subject to the influence of impurity. So we put uh, the schach, the way we know it, that cannot become impure. Chachamim tell us, that is exactly like the imayla, the imayla the bina, also which is the right, the 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 the, the, the lowest sefira in the mohim, in the brain, if you will. Right. Also, she's so high; she's the lowest of the highest that does not have influence that cannot be influenced or impacted by our negative actions. And that's the imayla, that's the, that's the sefira that actually judges us, right, on Rosh Hashanah. And that's the one that will now shower upon us all the berachot that she's getting from the keter and the chokmah, from the mohin that are above her, good? And that's the schach that sits on top. So the schach, if you will, represents 
de Beracha that is being showered upon us. So that's why we, first of all, we need a Shach Kasher, and that's why it's so important also to make Berachot under the Sukkah, right? And to stay under the Sukkah and to sleep in the Sukkah if possible, and to eat in the Sukkah and to drink in the Sukkah and to learn in the Sukkah because everything you do in your routine under the Sukkah triggers the Beracha on that action for the year. You drink in the sukkah, you trigger the beracha of the sukkah in your drinking for, throughout the year. You eat in the sukkah, you trigger the beracha of the sukkah in your eating along, uh, during the year. You learn Torah in the sukkah, you trigger the beracha of learning Torah during the year. You sleep in the sukkah, etc., etc. Okay? That's, that's the schach. That's the schach. After that, we said that we need to have, we need to have three walls, right? So it's a machloket. What does it mean? Three walls? Is it two walls of four tefachim and one of one tefach? So two normal walls and one that that is the beginning of a wall and it has at least one tefach. Or is it three walls of four tefachim and the fourth one of one tefah? Okay. So there are two opinions in the in the, in the, the Gemara. One says you need two and 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 the little one, and another opinion says you need three and the little one. Either way, either way, the, the, what is the machloket? The machloket is in. Now, the fanot, the, the, the walls, can be, tame, right? You can put uh, any type of walls. You can have walls made out of uh, metal, of, of, of rock. You can have any types of wall, right? The, the walls can be anything. So it can be mekabel tuma. Because Chachim come and want to tell you that if the walls can be mekabel tuma, these are the walls that represent the sefirot that are under the influence of the clipot that can be impacted by our negative actions, which are so very simple. We in the Chasadim, we have Chesed, we have Gevura, we have Tiferet, Netzar, Hod, Yesod. Okay, good. And we have uh, the, the last one, which is uh, which is not good. So there is a there is a rule Chachamim teach us that the clipot can only affect the extremities, not the, 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 not the internal uh, uh, cab, not the internal pipeline. So Tiferet and Yesod cannot be touched by the clipot, so only the extremities. So you have Chesed, you have Gevura, you have Netzach and Hod. You can only have four. Good? So, Chachamim, come and tell us. Now, how do, we, how do we make the walls? Do you have two, which is the Chesed and the Gevura, right? And the third one is the Malchut. Or do you have Chesed and Gevura, and the third one, which is the Netzach and the O that usually come together, and then the Malchut. So the little one, the third one, would represent, if you will, the malchut, right? But either way, either way, both will uh, are are discussing the the order of the sefirot around the uh, around the world. Which means, which means, how does that translate into uh, into what uh, our avoda of of uh, of sukkot? That it's one thing to be protected and covered by the Shekhinah, by the Ima Ila'a, to shower upon us the Beracha and the abundance. But on the other end, we have to be sensitive also to the fact that we have walls around us 
that are under uh, susceptible to to, uh, to impurity and can get hurt. To how does so? How does that apply to us? We have to be careful not to talk la shonara, not to talk the devarim betelim inside the sukkah. So although we have rebuilt the whole pipeline and we see it as a sukkah physically, we have to be emotionally sensitive to the fact that it's still very fragile, the sukkah, right? And that's, we need to build up the sukkah until it's, it are, the pipeline until it's fully built and then we can go back home, shmini atzeret, and that's going to be the solidifying all the bracha that we have built and received throughout that period. But while we're inside the sukkah, we have to be very sensitive to the fact that this entire structure we have been working to rebuild since Rosh Hashanah is still very fragile. So on one hand, yes, we are blessed by the, the potential beracha we can bring down into our life, but we cannot forget what we see in front of us, which are the walls that are still subject to negative influence. Good. This is the environment of the sukkah we live in. For that specific reason, also there are certain things we don't uh, we don't do in this. We cannot you cannot have uh, uh, something impure in the sukkah. You cannot have you cannot have bathrooms in the sukkah. You cannot have uh, you know uh, a lot of things you cannot do in the sukkah that are that can. Tr- trigger or bring a person to to fail and that would impact and influence the sefirot that we work so hard to build and purify during uh, the aseret yemetshuvah and contaminate it for the rest of the year. So being in the sukkah is on one hand a tremendous beracha but that requires uh, a lot of awareness in our behavior. So, now, we brought in the beginning uh, uh, the, the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, that if the sukkah is higher than 20 amot, it's pasul, it's, in, it's not a good sukkah, not kasher. And if it's lower than 10 tefahim, 10 tefahim, uh, uh, it's also, it's also uh, not kosher. Now we know that the ama is uh, the big measure, the tefah is the smaller measure, right? It's like you talk, uh, you have feet and you have inches. Okay, you're feeling it. So the Zohar tells us something interesting. If you take the word sukkah, right? Samech is 60, Vav is six, that's 66, Chav 20, 86, and five, 91, right? It's exactly the same gematria numerology of Yud Ke Vav Ke and Amonai, Aleph, Dalet, Nun Yud. Amonai is 65, Yud Ke Vav Ke is 26, Together it's 91. Now, if you write it in conjunction of letters, so you refer, you put the U, and then after the U, the Aleph. And then you put the He, and after the He, the Dalit, right? The way we used, you would see it in the Sidurim, right? When you have the Yud Kebab after the Sidurim. So you would have the, 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 that name of Hashem starts with the Yud and finishes with the Yud, right? It starts from the Yud of Yud Kebab and it finishes by the, with the Yud of Amonai. So the, 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 the Chachmea Kabbalah tells us here, first of all, you have the Gematria Sukkah, right? The Yud Kevavke is what? Yud Kevavke is the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu of all the Sefirot. Amonai is the name, the, 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 the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu in the Malchut, right? In the Shekhinah that we bring together and make one. That was the whole Avodah of Rosh Hashanah. 
to bring back the Malchut and rebuild the whole system, the whole pipeline, right? So this is what the Sukkah is about, bringing the Tameh with something that cannot be touched by Tumah, by the, the Shach. And we bring all this around us and we exist inside and bring life to that Shema Kadosh, to that name, okay, within ourselves, so that that name of Akadosh Baruch Hu and that unity between our, our, our life that is extremely spiritual and cannot be impacted or influenced by negativity and the world that is subject to all the negativity can coexist and be showered and compounded and protected by the two yudim, that the, the, the yud of, of the big name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, okay, and the yud of the Amunai, which is the, the, the small name of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Now, if you take the small name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, right, that, in, in, within that name, so what is the, 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 the last, the last letter? It's you, right? It's the yud, yud is 10. So 10 in small measures, Asarat Fahim. If it's below Asarat Fahim, if you're past that, if you go past that, it's not good. If you take the big name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, the first Yud, which is Yud Kevavke, and you take the big version of that Yud, which is the Milul, take the name Yud in big, and you, you write it completely. How do you write it completely? Yud Vav Dalet. How, how do you write it? Yud, yud Vav Dalet. Yud Vav Dalet is Gematria 20. 20 uh, in the big measure, 20 Amot Pasu. You cannot go above that, and you cannot go below this. This is, if, if you will, it's coming to, the, the sukkah is coming to frame our year and bring, uh, not a measure, but bring a, 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 an ecosystem that we will grow in and we will, will develop ourselves in during the year. This is, if you will, the, 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 the womb of our, of, of our potential of the entire year. So everything we can, all the nutrients, all the life we can take from within that womb, from within that ecosystem is what we will carry throughout the year when we get out of it. It's like the newborn, right? We get out and then the newborn, whatever he took from his mother, he took from his mother, he didn't take from his mother, he didn't take, and what else, right? This is, this is, if you will, the Kedusha of the, of the Sukkah. This is the purpose of the Sukkah, to to crystallize, to crystallize and absorb and integrate as much Bracha possible to realize our potential. So when I look at the schach, when I look at the defanot, the, the, the walls, I understand where, you know, the environment I'm in, I understand the impact I have. And through that connection with the names of Akadosh Baruch that all this represents, everything I do inside the sukkah, I impact for the, the, the entire year. Good? Now the Zohar adds one more element. The Zohar says that we have to invite the Ushpizim. We have to invite our forefathers, guests in the Sukkah. The, you know, we invite Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aharon, yeah, Yosef, and David, right? Which are like the seven Sifirot. On the first day, we invite Abraham that comes with the rest of the Ushpizim, and we consolidate through our actions of that day, of the first day, all the abundance of Chesed that will come on each of these actions. So what the eating, drinking, sleeping, learning, yes, uh, 
whatever you do inside the sukkah on the first day will be blessed by the chesed, by the midata chesed of the, of the day. You do the same thing on the second day that it will, you will be blessed with the midata gvura, strength. The third day, tif eret, emet, the fourth day, right? So it's, although it seems repetitive, although it seems repetitive, but every day has within it a potential and in, that, that, that the, the other day cannot, cannot, cannot complete, cannot cover. I mean, what you do on the first day, if you didn't do on the third, on the third day, the third day, your tif, that, which represents the tiferet, well, that will be missing. For that reason, in the Mishnah, some uh, some Tanaim hold that you have to eat every, you have to you have to eat two seudot of Birkat Amazon every day in the sukkah, so that you can you can at least bless your beracha, your meal, bless your table, bless your parnasa for the entire year to come from each and and be able to tap in to different pipes of abundance that you might need. Sometimes we need abundance of chesed, sometimes we need gevura, sometimes we need netzach, sometimes we need hot, sometimes every day we need, uh, in every situation might require another type of abundance to get our efforts to fruition. This is what we build during the sukkah, during the seven days of the sukkah. Why two and not one? To what? A birkat amazon. Ah, why two seudot? Yeah. Because that, that's the minag, a person, how many times does he eat? Two times, he makes a seudah, two times, except for Shabbat, where we make seudah shlishit, right? We add on one seudah. Right. But do you know, normally a person eats a meal at night and a meal at lunch, right? So we follow the, we follow the, again, minhag olam. We, we, we do what we would do every day, in yes, order to be, to be blessed for these things throughout the year. But the element, the element that is added in the Zohar is that although, although it is true, the sukkah, the, and the walls of the sukkah and the schach of the sukkah all represent the sefirot and the hasabim, etc. But if you don't invite that midah, if you don't call upon it to come and be with you and bless you, it's not coming. It's not coming. It's like a vessel that is empty. It's not coming. Why? So, the Zohar wants to teach us something, uh, Rav Amnuna Sama wants to teach us something very important. Is that in order to, uh, to be granted beracha, you need to show dependence. You need to ask for it. And you need to respect it. And you need to appreciate it. You cannot come and ask for something that you don't value. You want chesed? You have to value chesed. You want... Uh, 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 you have to you have to value chokhmah. You want emet. You have to value the emet. And if you don't appreciate it, and you don't value it, and you don't want it, well, it's not going to come. Even if it's a, if it's a potential, it's a potential that will not come to fruition. So, the, the, it's extremely important in the sukkah before we start the day, right? So at night to call upon. The sukkah, to come inside the sukkah, each, each ushpiz, Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and we call each one and we say, we need, Akadosh Baruch Hu, I need your chesed, bishchut Avraham, midata chesed. I need your gevura, bishchut Yitzhak Avinu. I need your tiferet, bishchut Yaakov Avinu. I want it, I cherish it. And how do I show that I cherish it? The minag is what? It's customary to have a chair dedicated to the ushpizim, to the ushpiz. We put a chair, a beautiful chair, 
that and and that's where we, we, it's a siman, right? It's a sign that here we respect, we cherish, we value, we honor that beracha, that source of, of abundance that you are, Akadosh Baruch is sending us. Bishut, bishut Abraham, bishut Chag, bishut Yam. And finally, a last touch about the, the sukkah. Chachamim call it tzila dimhe minuta. The cell, the shadow, not the shadow, the shade, the shade of the emuna. The shade of the emuna. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, you know, it's simple. Why? I mean, emuna comes from the word amen. Right? Amen is Gematria 91. 91 is the Gematria of Yudke Vavke and Admut. That's how that's how that. That's simple. Okay. See later in the But more so, the, the deeper the, 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 the and the explanation to that is that we believe 100 percent that Akadosh Baruch Hu grants us tremendous beracha right now, that he's with us, and we believe that. From those days, all the year will depend. We have a moon in you, Akadosh Baruch. We believe in you. And we know that right now you're showering upon us everything. And for that, I thank you. And for that, I'm super happy. Zeman Simhatin. Zeman Simhatin. Why are we happy? Because we bring home all the fruits. We bring home all the beracha. You have a tree filled with uh, beautiful fruits. And you all take, the, you all, all you have to do is keep on taking the fruits. Take, take as much as you want. As much as you want. This is the sukkah. This is the mitzvah of the sukkah. You enter the sukkah, you're in that field of fruits where you can take all the fruits that you want and bring them home that will last you for the year. But you have to understand the dimension of the shekhinah, of the kedushah the sukkah has. And recognize and respect the fact that you have Shemot of Akadosh, you have the unity, right? Between the, the world of spirituality and the world of, phys of physicality that comes and merges together. The, your highs and your lows that come together. That's, that's you know, in a few minutes, uh, the, the, the Kavanot that we have to have uh, inside the Sukkah that I think puts forward the, uh, the importance of spending as much time as possible in the sukkah and behaving normally, you know, and living normally our lives inside the sukkah during these days. And understanding, tremendously important, understanding that what you do the first day has nothing to do with the second day. Every day is, is, is Bringing down a, a different flavor of shefa, right? Different fruits. The first day you bring apples. The second day you bring oranges. The third day you're bringing, I don't know, mango. You know. So to each their own. Beautiful. Thank you, Rav. Thank you. Thank you.